All right, so today we're gonna to continue with the whole metal in Ableton segment. So I got quite a few questions about programming drums and general tips with programming drums in Ableton. So today I'm just gonna go over a riff I recorded, no drums recorded yet. Recorded guitars on there. You can see if you're interested on how to record guitars professionally, I have a video right here, how I do it in Ableton. And then I was too lazy to track bass. So sometimes I'll just take one of the rhythm guitars, assuming there's no chords. It gets weird with chords, but I copy the rhythm. I go down to my bass track, I paste it. And then I go over here, I put it into complex or complex pro because beats gets weird. And then I go into the pitch here and I go one octave down and it's on a bass dark glass tone. It kind of sounds like a bass. It sounds weak, but it does the job for pre-pro. I'll go through my whole workflow. So here, as soon as I open up Ableton, my metal preset is ready. So I have Invasion and I set it to be the multi out. You can do stereo, but when you set it to multi out, you have complete control over how you mix everything. And then if you don't see this bar down here, you go into this little thing right here. This is like your inputs and outputs. Add outputs here. I often just add a bunch and then label them separate. I have my kick drum set out of three and four instead of one and two. For some reason, output one and two is like the master output. You have to go to whatever track the VST drums are on. In my case, it's two contact and you click two contact. That's when you'll get all these options in the secondary input. So I see in here it's labeled ST2, 1 and 2. So I just go in here and I see ST2 and that's it. And you just do that with all your drums. Say you're writing a really cool guitar part and you put program drums over, but the program drum sounds are very stock and they don't sound imp impactful enough. It'll actually make you think that your part isn't as good as it is. My whole template is already set to be mixed. So yeah, I can see my kick, snare, rack, floor, hi-hat. In Ableton, you're gonna grab the section that you want to program drums over on the MIDI track. You have to make sure you have a MIDI track. For me, it's this whole segment. Shift, Control, M. If for whatever reason, this whole grid isn't showing up down here, you can do Control, Alt, L, or just double click the drums. So now we have the drums. If you click this button here, it'll let you audition them on the keyboard. Typically just find my kicks. And there you go, my kicks there, my snares there. So on this part, I want to start with like a bang. So in this case, my kicks start here. And then there's a snare. So as you can see, I'm double clicking. B switches between pencil and selector. If you haven't seen, I have a video here about my Ableton workflow. Check that out. But let's continue with this. The downfall to B is also one of its strengths, which is you can draw a bunch of notes at first. But you'll see if I go up, start drawing on another one and say I didn't necessarily want that. So also say I'm on the tom and I wanted it to be on a cymbal, I can either scroll up and try to drag to find it or you click and use the arrow keys to go up and down. And if you want to go by a full octave, which I often do to go from cymbals to toms on the MIDI keyboard, hold shift and go arrow up or arrow down. And if you hold shift and go left or right, it'll increase or decrease the size of your MIDI note. I always start with a symbol just to get the general groove going. I'll change it eventually and I'll add extra symbols. So let's go with right crash for right now. Cool. So you can either click like that, draw one, draw two, and then go B to get the selector back. Highlight everything and make sure that the blue section at the top here is your entire selection that you want to be copied. That duplicates it and then I'll highlight it all again and duplicate it and then I'll highlight it all again and duplicate it. But in this case, I forgot to do some velocity. So I'll make it so the first hit's hard and the second hit's a bit softer. And then I'll duplicate this. And then I'll make it so that these are slightly different as well. So I'll make this a little bit lower and I'll make this a little bit lower. So now I have four different symbol velocities and I'll just copy and paste that so that sounds more natural. I have a feeling I know where the snares are gonna be. So I do the exact same thing. The snares right there. Um, so I feel like the snares are gonna be there. And I'll do the same thing. So I'll do that. I'll make this one slightly different. And then I double that up. Oh, and you see I messed up there. So I went one too much on the grid. Since this section is where I want it to be, I'll hold shift, grab this and this drag. 
the kicks are gonna be probably a little bit different. Use the pencil tool because you're gonna be drawing in the most notes on kick drum out of any other drum. So now I know that's the general pacing of what my kick notes are gonna look like. And then it happens again. Is it here? Too early. So that is basically what my drums are gonna sound like and look like for the rest of the part. So if I want, since there's not much changes going on in the guitar or the rhythm, I will just take those and duplicate it. And you see I messed up again there. This is 90% of programming drums. So this part changes a bit. But let's say I wanted to make that part a triplet. All you have to do in Ableton, if you're on Mac, I believe it's Command-3. PC, you do Control-3, and it'll switch into triplet mode. And go back to normal. Undo and redo are my best friends. I often use them to mute something into A, B. I don't love the symbol that this part's on, so all you have to do is click on the keyboard here, whichever note it's on, it'll highlight every single one within that selection. So it grabbed all the symbols, but see if I, if I cut here and then I select this and I move it up two, and then I go here, it'll still be on the old one because they're two different MIDI tracks. And then second half is very similar. So your best choice here is to then cut in the middle, which is control E or command E. And then now the grid starts here. And the thing is when you click on the MIDI here, it'll show you a blue arrow up in here in the waveform view. So say I play this part and I know that I wanna move the drums from this point on, I'll click here just to get an indicator and then I know it starts there. I'll cut it again. It's super easy to rejoin everything. Get the rhythm down and copy it. And then I can start adding toms and get creative with it. I've done a video on how to program drums going from like the stock sound, which is what you're hearing now, to the more interesting one, to the most interesting one. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out right here. So now is where I start changing everything. If the drums are more interesting, I'll change the guitars to make them more interesting like that. So I kind of find where it sounds like the one would come in, just for placement wise, and then I'll start to move the cymbals around. And then this part, I want it to be a little more interesting. So I'll put the china onto the ride. I have these two highlighted and I want to put notes in between. For Windows, I'll hold Control, click it, and then drag it in there, and it'll keep these here, but whatever is highlighted, you can duplicate and hold and then drop it somewhere else. I get that blue notification there. That's kind of cool. So same thing, I can just highlight the one note that I want, like that. Command D will duplicate it right after that note ends, and then I use the arrow key to move the note onto the grid where I want it. Which is pretty cool to me. It does a baby elk born, in the, born and raised in into captivity. Weird. And then maybe I'll do that same snare thing again here. This is what I meant in the other episode when I said that well-written drums are better than well-written guitars because the well-written guitars are cool, but the stock drums don't do anything. They just sound very plain. But the better written drum parts and the more interesting part make the guitar sound way better than it actually is. You don't have to play drums, but spending a little time behind a drum kit as a guitar player will actually make you a way better guitar player. Even if that means going to your local music store and trying the electric kit. They're set up for a reason. You don't have to buy it. Toms are like a drummer's notes, you know? Everything else is like a palm mute and then toms are like the riff. For some reason in programmed drums, if it's just toms, it sounds weak, but I know that when real drums would be tracked, it would sound a lot stronger than that. And it's not even a volume thing, it's just program drums. Just I don't, I don't get where they're going wrong with toms. So I usually add kicks underneath. Changing the cymbals makes the part more interesting, so it's not, you don't get ear fatigued. I'm gonna make it more interesting by going back and forth. You duplicate your interesting drum groove, and then you alter it the second time around. And for kicks, I usually like them 100% velocity. The easiest way in Ableton to change your velocity, you grab it while it's still holding Alt. I think it's Command on Mac. And then click with your mouse and go up or down. Say here, I wanted to change all of them. I'll make this bigger. Going into pencil and then you draw a map if you wanted to.
So yeah, that's just how I program drums. If you wanna see how I mixed MIDI drums to make them sound real, to make them sound better, I have two videos on them right here. Check them out and yeah, thanks for watching.